together. Hare Krishna, dear devotees, then with Pranam, Jashila Prabhupada, we are celebrating Narsingh Chaturdashi and we are uh, discussing story of Narsingh Dev and Prahlad Maharaj today. So let's recite Mangla Charan. Om Ajnana Timirandhasya Jnananjana Shalakaya Chakshuvan Militam Tasmatam Sri Chaitanya Mahindishtam Sapitam Yena Bhutale Vayam Rupa Kadamayam Sadatika Padantikam Vandeham Sri Gurukhamanam Shreshnavamscha Vishnupam Sagrajatam Sahavaragunathandutam Sakhivam Sadhavetam Sabadutam Krishna Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Iradha Krishna Padam Sagana Lalita Shri Vishakandutam Sri Krishna Karna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namaste Sapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vishwane Vare Devi Pranamami Hari Priyari Vancha Kalpata Rukhya Kripa Sindhuja Eva Chav Patita Nam Aadhyamiro Vaishna Vemiro Vishnama Namona Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Samati Bhakti Vedam Swami Hakanamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharane Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Pashtasri Pracharane Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Jai Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shri Vatavi Gaur Mahalinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Krishna Hare Hare Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Bukam Karoti Vachalam Pandhuri Gayate Gere Vipatam Vande Shri Kundina Saranam Parmananda Madhavam Krishna Chaitanya Guru Vegar Chandraya Radhikaya Tadala Krishnaya Krishna Tadala Kaspatra Namuna Hare Krishna Let's recite this prayer also to Narsingh Dev from Srimad Bhagavatam Chapter 18 from 5th Canto verse 8 Om Namo Bhagavate Narsimaya Om Namo Bhagavate Narasimhaya Om Namo Bhagavate Narasimhaya Namaste Jasya Tejase Avera Virbhava Vajranaka Vajradam Shram Karmashaya Asadhyaya Tamo Grasa Grasa Maswaha Apyam Apyam Atmani Bhuishta Om Shram I offer my respectful obeisances unto Lord Narasimha Dev, the source of all power. O oh my Lord, who possesses nails and teeth just like thunderbolts, kindly vanquish our demon-like desires for fruitive activity in this material world. Please appear in our hearts and drive away our ignorance, so that by your mercy we may become fearless in the struggle for existence in this material world. And uh, let's recite these also. So these prayers were also said by um, Mahaprabhu in uh, Chaitanya Charitamrit. The verses come, these verses come that he used to recite um, to nursing deities. Okay. Shri Narsimha, Jaya Narsimha, Jaya Jaya Narsimha. Shri Narsimha, Jaya Narsimha, Jaya Jaya Narsimha. Rala Desha, Jaya Padma, Mukha Padma, Bringa. Shri Narasimha, Jai Narasimha, Jai Narasimha. Praladesha Mukha Padma, Praladesha Jaya Padma, Mukha Padma Bringa. Praladesha Jaya Padma, Mukha Padma Bringa. 
उग्रम वीर महाविष्णु ज्वलत सर्वतोमुखम नरसिंह भीषण भद्रम मृत्यु मृत्यु नमाम्यहम नरसिंह भीषण भद्रम मृत्यु मृत्यु नमाम्यहम श्री नरसिंह जय नरसिंह जय जय नरसिंह श्री नरसिंह देश जया पद्मा मुखा पद्म उग्रम वीर महाविष्णु ज्वलत सर्वतोमुखम नरसिंह भीषण भद्रम मृत्यु मृत्यु नमाम्यहम एवरीवन टुगेदर फ्रॉम द बिगिनिंग टू द एंड वेरी लाउडली श्री नरसिम्मा जय नरसिम्मा जय जय नरसिम्मा so this also has a very nice meaning um uh please feel free to i mean if you listen to any lectures they'll they'll share that meaning of this verse and uh, you can always look up in chetanya charitamrita and the verses are there so um but we'll move forward so we discussed yesterday jaydev go swami's prayer keshav dhirita narhari rupa and especially took these two words keshav and narhari i hope um everybody was able to hear if not i'll share the recording i could not record the initial part of yesterday's lecture but i have one from before that i gave a few days back i'll share that then we talked about how narsingh dev is non non different from krishna he is keshav basically coming in narhari form and there are innumerable incarnations of lord they come um in this world just like the waves come in the sea right waves come one after another similarly um and many waves come sometime at a, at the same time similarly there are so many incarnations that are manifesting either at the same time or at different times but one after another in different universes and at all times the pastimes of the lord are going on for the pleasure of the devotees and to establish dharma and to establish um, and to take uh, take away the demons right uh, for various purposes lord comes in different time place and circumstances according to the situation according to the consciousness of people of that time right so you see jesus christ in this um particular picture um there is uh, i believe this may be either one of the um, muhammad or some other religions and then you see ved vyas there you see parshuram there you see bara uh, vaman dev there uh, and then mohini roop there right so different for various reasons lord comes and to establish different purposes and sometimes we don't even know the purpose of the lord like for mahaprabhu for garanga you see chaitanya mahaprabhu in the front uh, who came about 500 years back in kaliyuga we have talked about uh, his external and internal reasons for coming there were some re- some purposes that he some desires that he had that he wanted to fulfill with his devotees and then some external reasons where he is benefiting the whole world by spreading the sankirtan movement right and then you can see in this picture there are four kumaras that is also uh, one of the uh, incarnation of the lord right you see jesus again in this you see buddha here right vedvyas here so so many um, um incarnations are there and we don't know their purpose every time we may not even recognize them as lord at that time right uh, lord may decide to stay hidden and not manifest his past times to everybody he may reveal those past times just to his confidential associates and every time he comes he comes with his confidential associates with his 
parshads with his nitya said the devotees right and when lord doesn't come then his devotees come to establish dharma so when mahaprabhu came after that again the dharma got lost again a religion started spreading so then the whole disciplic succession bhakti vinod you know, thakur bhakti siddhant saraswati maharaj um, gaur kishor das baba ji maharaj our beloved prabhu pad right prabhu pad spread the movement all over the world so in this way then his devotees who are who are not bhagwan but they are representatives of bhagwan then they come and they spread dharma but when lord comes in all his you know opulences of with fully potent fully opulent in his most sweet charming form then he is krishna that is the original uh, roop of the lord the sham sundar form of the lord where he enjoys eternal pastimes in the golok vrindavan and he manifested those same pastimes here for a short time and that is krishna but then other avatars also he manifests like various moods like in narsingh dev's form he is manifesting a very uh, veer or ugra roop veer mood where he wants to fight with the uh, with hiranyakashipu where he wants to please his devotee and fight and show a very angry ferocious form so that demons everywhere will be um, uh, will be scared of him will be unko dekh ke thar thar kaapenge unko dekh ke not only hiranyakashipu was uh, scared but even demigods right even lakshmi ji brahma ji shiv ji uh, narad muni everybody was scared looking at this ferocious form wow, we have never seen this kind of uh, rudra roop ugra roop bibhats roop of of our sweet lord before our sweet lord is so charming so beautiful what is this form with 16 arms we like the two handed form we don't even care for the four handed form and now this is a 16 handed form so very very bewildering but um, this is uh, this type of wonderful acts are performed by the lord so that devotees will talk about these acts for for a long long time to come right so we then we talked about this verse that predicts the appearance of gauranga in kaliyuga this comes in narsingha puran also and um, we talked about why we should worship narsingha dev because he clears all the obstacles in our path towards radha and krishna so we want to worship radha and krishna in sakya bhav or madhurya bhav um, or dasya bhav but even that worship is possible only by the mercy of narsingha dev because he make he makes sure that there are no material obstacles no spiritual obstacles in our path um, that we don't have any internal problems that will stop us like our own anarthas our own sinful tendencies our own demonic pr- propensities our anger our greed our offensive mentality all these things he takes care of he takes away right and we talked about various past times of lord narsingha in the gaur leela where chaitanya mahaprabhu manifested the um uh, the narsingha roop in front of various devotees so um and this is just some of the verses i have mentioned i recited yesterday um of chantazi how he was so scared and uh, uh, narsingha dev paid him darshan then we talked about the story of Uh, ugra narsimha who appeared in the mayapur dham right this is the deity of the ugra narsimha you can see on the right aaj subah abhishek ho raha tha actually we were watching the abhishek of uh, narsingh the ugra narsimha in mayapur dham um with the uh, all kind of products and this is the very difficult to see this form because this form you only see during the time of abhishek typically we see the form all covered like this with garlands and dresses and jewels so you don't see all these hands and the um complete form you see prahlad maharaj very small standing there also uh, so this is the ugra narsimha we discussed the past time of how ugra narsimha came to mayapur dham and this is his grace pankaj angri prabhu who, who worshiped ugra narsimha in mayapur dham for 50 years and his brother i don't know which one is which here uh, janani vas prabhu who worshiped uh, radha madhav um, and still worshiping radha madhav and ashta sakis in mayapur dham um so this is um, and then i will not today we won't talk about narsingha's past times with devotees but i just want um, wanted to tell everybody that narsimha did not just come in satyug okay he, we think okay tab aaye the prahlad maharaj ko he gave anand prahlad alad daine hame to anand nahi dene aa rahe we don't see we are in so much trouble we don't see narsingha dev coming to us right so um there are actually many many past times of narsingha dev with many devotees especially in mayapur dham 
Ugra Narsimha has many, many sweet pastimes, very beautiful, charming pastimes of Ugra Narsimha. And they're not Ugra pastimes at all. They are very, very sweet pastimes with the devotees there. And then in modern times, also in different parts of the world, um, if we have time, one day we'll talk about, or if, if I do it in another class, I'll share the video of uh, various, like uh, a little girl in South Africa, how she got darshan of Narsinga. Uh, there is a pastime of some book distributors who were being harassed uh, by like a bikers gang and how they got darshan of Narsinga uh, and many, 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 like there are whole books written. There are so many pastimes. I'll share the books also. <clears throat> uh, Her Grace uh, Yamuna Mataji, who was very dear to Prabhupada, Prabhupada's disciple, uh, how she had an experience of Narsinga Dev in her, um, she shares it in her book. Um, so, so many, many pastimes that devotees have recounted. And these are authentic pastimes because they were being mentioned by Pankaj Angri Prabhu himself. And he says, the ones that I don't think are authentic are uh, somebody's manufactured or uh, imagination, hallucinations. We don't, um, you know, we don't typically talk about them or publish them. But the ones published in the books or in their lectures are typically that are very, very authentic, were um, uh, seen by many other devotees also were um, a part of that pastime when only it is shared okay so but today we'll talk more about the story of uh, nursing in Prahlad uh, because I had um, uh, prepared some slides for that so I wanted to share that story uh, you can see in this Lord nursing of Mayapur is famous all over the world uh, for his loving reciprocation with the devotees he was installed in 1986 after the temple was attacked by decoits Lord Chaitanya explains that although very ferocious, the lioness is very kind to her cubs. Similarly, although very ferocious to non-devotees, Lord Narsingha Dev is very, very soft and kind to devotees like Prahlad. Okay. So uh, we also talked about our disciplic succession's allegiance to Narsingha Dev. How every single Acharya has um, um, has taken shelter of Narsingha Dev, right? So. Um, the and the reason all our disciplic succession very importantly stresses on nursing Dev is because yes they, he clears the path towards um radha krishna you see how radha krishna are there in golok vrindavan and we are suffering here in this um, jungle this jal you can see it's almost like a jal of so many problems sense gratification fake religions fake religiosity right where there is just rituals economic development we are stuck with all these things pious acts sense object, sense gratification. Even the liberation traps us. The last trap of Maya is liberation, right? Yeah, but we try to get past all these desires and these, these traps of various things and try to get to Radha Krishna. And um, Narsingha Dev just makes, uh, you know, in this fearful world, in this fearful condition where there is danger at every step, right? Padam padam vipadam natesham, right? Uh, in Bhagavatam, very famously, it is said that every step there is danger, but to those there is no danger who take shelter of the Supreme Lord. And especially shelter of Narsing Bhagwan, who is so, um, uh, you know, uh, who is actually very merciful. It, it is said, Ugra Api Anugraho, meaning he is Ugra, but he is merciful to the devotee. So he is actually very, very soft hearted, uh, just like lionesses towards her cubs. Yeah, for cat ka example aata, you know, cat, how she holds kitten in her mouth and kitten feels very safe in the mouth, right? Mouth of the cat. That same mouth is so ferocious to rat or to mouse. But for the kitten, that same mouth is such a nice, warm feeling that I'm completely protected and sheltered. Similarly, even though this material world is a fearful condition, let's all take shelter of nursing the day at every step. Sing nursing arti every single day. Sing those verses of, you know, Sri Narsimha, Jaya Narsimha, every single day to show your surrender that please protect me from this material world, not only like my health um, so that I can do services, but also my services, protect my services, protect my uh, devotees, protect my, uh, the, my association of devotees so that I may never neglect them, so that I may always take care of them and never take them for granted. Uh, protect our temples, protect our deities in the temple who have put themselves in our care. The deities have put themselves in our care. Like a child is put in the care of mother, Lord has mercifully put himself in our care. We have to take care of those vigraha. Log aise criticize karte hain deities ko, ki tumhare deity ko dekho, humne gira diya, humne paani mein gira diya, kyo, kyo nahi bacha sakte apne aapko. 
but this is a merciful form of the lord given to us to for us to take care of him <laughs> not for him to also take care of us in this in this world again so we are not always asking lord to uh, you know help us but in nursing the roop we can ask lord to help us right um so we always take shelter of the lord in this fearful condition of life this material world and um, and so this is like a jail right this is full of misery dukhalyam ashashvatam i don't know who who i asked this verse from yesterday but they beautifully answered dukhalyam ashashvatam this is the house of misery is meant for punishment so um goranga uh, you know chaitanya mahaprabhu who is none other than krishna who is who is gor hari gor simma who showed nursing roop so many times he himself used to um uh, when he was in jagannath puri um i think you all know that there is um, tota gopinath deity is there right tota gopinath uh, story everybody has heard how the deity of tota gopinath manifested to uh, gadadhar pandit i shared that lecture gadadhar pandit's appearance day was just um, probably two weeks back and we shared the lecture of how tota gopinath deities appeared to gadadhar pandit so gadadhar pandit used to worship gadadhar pandit is radharani right so he used to worship tota gopinath deity in jagannath puri and every afternoon mahaprabhu will come to tota gopinath sit with gadadhar pandit and they will read bhagavatam for 3 hours every day for 3 hours right both are sanyasis both are reading um bhagavatam for 3 hours every afternoon and guess what was their favorite who can guess what was their favorite chapter or canto to read from shrimad bhagavatam which canto or which story you can say yes avni Canto five. Canto five. Okay. Uh, which one is that? Does that have which stories? Does it have? Um. Wait. Which one's the Narsimha one? Oh, okay. Okay. So yeah, that that's the one you're talking about. So nursing uh, chapter is Canto is Canto seven, right? Canto seven, where the whole it is actually the longest story in the whole Bhagavatam, where the full Canto is dedicated to Pralada and nursing the story. no other stories are dictated in that much so they used to read, guess how many times they read seventh canto of shrimad bhagavatam yeah it's just any number seven times seven times okay i'll give you a hint how many beads are there in a um, eight, eight. eight 108 times they read seventh canto 108 times so imagine he is krishna but he is reading the charitra of a devotee he we were so attached to the um prahlad charitra also dhruv charitra but prahlad charitra and dhruv charitra he was so attached to that he would read them over and over again gadadhar pandit would recite radharani who is reciting and mahaprabhu who is krishna is hearing this and canto will finish and he will say start again right um, so in this way they read so many times and imagine the krishna is hearing the character of a devotee why because he has come in the form of a devotee himself so he wants to take delight in the past time of a devotee he wants to establish that this is how a devotee should be this is just like prahlad right okay so that was uh, so goranga also with his past time showed that how important it is to um, take shelter of uh, prahlad and nursing right and this is just a verse that i saw which i really liked how material world is so fearful it is said that it is fearful for everybody it is fearful for the one who is a bhog bhogi bhoge rog bhayam bhogi who is indulging in sense gratification is scared of roga or disease kule chuti bhayam the one who is uh, of a very good family good like prominent family kul is worried about losing that status chuti bhayam ki gir jayega fall down ho jayega from that dynasty vitte nrupalad bhayam rich people are scared of uh, taxes mane dainya bhayam man means when you are very honorable or famous you are worried about losing that honor dainya bhayam bale ripu bhayam uh, strong people uh, are worried about losing that strength right um, of being weak rupe tarunya bhayam those that are beautiful are worried about losing that beauty hmm? shastre dainya bhayam shastra meaning those that are very learned are uh, worried about are scared of arguments losing arguments in philosophies okay gune 
kala bhayam virtuous people that there are many gun virtues are scared of wicked people right very um, moral people are worried about wicked people kai krutan tad bhaya um and um human body or body ya khaya is worried about death you are worried from death so in this way sarvam vastu bhayanvitam vishnu padam nirbhayam so sarvam vastu bhayanvitam that uh, everything brings fear in this world so this is the nature of this material world even if you have good things you still are scared even if you have knowledge you are scared that that knowledge will be robbed or somebody will defeat me in an argument even if you have good um, qualities morality and all you worried that wicked people will cheat me so even good things are bringing fear in this material world right so only vishnu padam nirbhayam those who have taken shelter of uh, vishnu are truly are nirbhay right so uh, these are just some of the these are those books that i was talking about i can share these links this is the past times of lord narsingha dev with various these are mayapur stories and these are the stories of uh, just in general other than mayapur i'll share those later see the eyes of narsingha dev um <clears throat> this is the ugra narsimha deity from mayapur dham just some pictures but let's start with our story of prahlad maharaj and his teachings and if we have time we'll try to read some uh, verses from shrimad bhagavatam so this is uh, uh, this story uh, starts from the seventh canto starts from uh, yudhishthir maharaj asked a question from narad muni in the rajsuya yagya okay remember there was rajsuya yagya going on and krishna was uh, being um, uh, given honors and shishupal uh, was uh, criticizing him and after 100 criticisms then krishna killed him with the sudarshan chakra right and Uh, yudhishthir maharaj saw that after killing shishupal the shishupal's body went into the body of krishna so he was very bewildered by this he said how come shishupal is so envious and yet he got liberation how come he got liberation he's so envious i thought krishna is partial to his devotees i thought he takes care of his devotees mostly how come this envious demonic person also got liberation please tell me narad muni what is this going on so Uh, the whole bhagavatam is nothing but conversations between different people right so then narad muni started telling a story and the story starts from this scene so who can tell what this scene is what is this picture showing guys you're having too much fun there somebody has to uh, from the sleepover gang should tell me what story this is yes vinita Uh, I I forgot their names, but I but um I think this is when the four Kumaras were trying to get into um, Vishnu's abode, and then uh, the two I forgot their names. So the two Jay and Vijay, they did not let them in because they thought, oh, these are like little kids, so they can't come in. Yeah. Yes, yes, that's it. So they did not let them come in, and then what happened? Uh, what did four Kumaras do? They cursed them. Right. Yes. Yes, Abhi. What was the curse? He said that the Fort Morris said that um, they are going to, you know, be like the villains or like enemies of the Lord when He descends. Yeah. He said uh, they gave him two options. You can either come down as uh, in seven for seven lives to the material world. or you can come as the enemy of the lord or as demonic people for three lifetimes so they said uh, we'll just choose three lifetimes we don't want to go for seven lifetimes even three lifetimes is long enough but at least uh, three lifetimes is shorter and um, in as a demonic person will give some be be rust to the lord right uh, lord is just residing in the vikuntha and he's uh, having all the madhurya ras sakya ras dasya ras shant ras all this but he doesn't get any veer ras so at least we can serve him like that so in this mood they accepted that curse and they went down and this was their first loop so what is this uh, past time this is more interactive guys so please keep answering one after another so we can move okay i'll ask navya yes navya this is the fighting her can you say it again stop moving and say it please varaha devi 
to her neck. Her yes. neck. Yes. So this is a whole different story. We won't go into it. Uh, but this is Varadev killing Hiranyaksh, right? This is Hiranyaksh. So uh, Varadev um, lifted the Bhumi Devi uh, out of the lower planet um, where Hiranyaksh had thrown her. And then uh, he also killed Hiranyaksh. And Hiranyaksh was the elder brother of? Who is this fellow, you think? Quickly, guys, so we can keep moving. Yes. Hiranyakashipu. It could be anybody, but he's elder brother of Hiranyakashipu. So this is Hiranyakashipu. So Hiranyaksh and Hiranyakashipu are Jay and Vijay. I don't know who is who, but um, typically it is said that they are Jay and Vijay. So this is Hiranyaksh and Hiranyakashipu. So guess what happened? Once Hiranyaksh got killed, right? Um, Hiranyaksh was very... Um, Hiranyaksh is the elder brother. Did I say that right? Hiranyaksh is the elder brother, Hiranyakashipu younger. So Hiranyaksh's family was very uh, upset, right? They, all the women in the family, Hiranyaksh's wife and their mother, Hiranyaksh and Hiranyakashipu's mother, they're all crying very, very loudly. This is all given in Srimad Bhagavatam, 7th Canto. You can all read. Narad Muni is telling the story to Vidishthir Maharaj. They're all crying, lamenting. And for days they are lamenting. Hiranyakashipu is like, what is going on? We need to move on, right? After somebody passes away, you don't just keep lamenting for days and days. There is a certain time period. And after that, you have to move on. So he said, so he gave them a lot of gyan. You know, when, whenever anybody leaves their body, you typically recite second chapter of Bhagavad Gita, right? The um, knowledge of soul. So he gave the same gyan, the same knowledge, uh, how the spirit soul is eternal, how um, uh, there cannot, and nothing can destroy it. It just takes birth temporarily, accepts a body, all the knowledge that all of you already know. He gave all this knowledge, very, very detailed knowledge to um, Hiranyaksha's wife and his mother and other people that were crying. He even told a story. He even told a story, um, including uh, which consisted of Yam, Yam Raj and how Yam Raj had come to take this um, bird who had died and his wife was also lamenting there and he will, she will not let go of the body. And um, she kept crying and crying. She will not move away from the body. And then Hunter came and killed her also because he wanted to take the body and he killed and Hunter killed her also. So in this way, he said, we don't, we cannot spend our life just crying over the uh, lost loved one because our death is also coming next, right? So we have to take, make use of this God given uh, human form rest of the time and uh, understand that this is by the arrangement of the Lord. So he gave very, very deep, nice, knowledge it is amazing that Hiranyakashipu knew all these things and he was still so demonic very very knowledgeable you know in that time even asuras and these demons used to be very very knowledgeable pundits actually like Ravan was right very very knowledgeable so but then he had this envy in, inside him against Vishnu how did Vishnu kill my elder brother Hiranyaksha right despite all this knowledge they are still very envious demons are do not recognize authority of the lord they still think that they can get a lot of powers. They just use people for powers. So he thought, I can use, um, I can get more power and become more powerful than Vishnu. He declared Vishnu his enemy and I'm going to take revenge for Hiranyaksha death. Okay. So Vishnu is my enemy. Now, Lord always says, Ye yatha maam prapadyante. Since you think I am your enemy, then I will come as your enemy. Then I'll come kill you. Right. So, ye yatha maam prapadyante, you, are, you think I'm your enemy, then I'll come in my most ferocious enemy like form eventually, right? But uh, he decided to do tapasya. You can see he did so much tapasya. He did tapasya austerities for like 36,000 years, actually. In, the, in those days, people used to live very, very long life, right? This is Satyug we are talking about. And uh, with austerity, you can even prolong your life much, much more. He did so much austerity that his body was completely gone. There was so much heat coming out of his body and it was burning up all the three lokas. And there was anthill. You see this anthill? I think there's, yeah. See all this anthill had come up around him. All these anthills. So his, you cannot even see where, he, where Hiranyakashipu was. And his body was reduced to this skeleton like you see here. Finally, uh, he was trying to please Brahmaji. So Brahmaji had no choice but to come because that is the nature of demigods. If you try to please them, they have no option but to come. So he came. Lord Brahma, you see in his, on his um, um, uh, swan, he came. 
and it is this is all described in Srimad Bhagavatam seventh canto how he came and he gave benedictions to Hiranyakashipu. He said, I cannot give you uh, immortality uh, because I'm not immortal myself. I am also mortal. I have a certain, I have a very very long duration of life, but after that duration, I also have to leave my body. So I cannot give you immortality. And and before giving any boons, he made his body strong and very opulent, like vajra wala sharir ho gaya. Uska bahut strong, bahut patthar jaisa sharir, very very strong ho gaya. And then he started giving him benedictions. So and then we go back. So while Hiranyakashipu was doing all this tapasya, what was going on in his kingdom? Does anyone know what is going on in this picture? What was going on in his kingdom when Hiranyakashipu is gone to Mandara mountain to do the? He's gone to Mandara mountain to do his austerities. But what is going on in his kingdom behind his back? Who can answer? Let's see. Yes, Nabya. The demigods kidnapped um, Keadu because they didn't want another demon like Aranika Shapu to come from her because she was pregnant. Yes. Yes. So basically, demigods attacked his kingdom because Aranika Shapu is gone. He had created so much terror in the hearts of demigods. He was doing so many bad things that they thought, okay, when he's gone, Let's plunder his kingdom. Let's, um, you know, take away everything so that he cannot. Uh, when he comes back, it will be all ruined. And especially they took away Kayadu, who is wife of Hiranyakashipu. So Indra and other dem demigods took Kayadu with them. But when they were taking Kayadu, his wife, who was pregnant with Prahlad Maharaj, who came, Narad Muni, right? Our transcendental traveler, transcendental spaceman, he came. So Narad Muni told demigods, you know. Uh, this lady Kayadu, she is carrying a Mahabhagwa devotee inside her. Okay, this this child is going is not going to be a demon like Hiranyaka Shipu. This child is going to be a great great devotee of the Lord with for all the times for people to talk about him. He will set an example for all the times. He'll be one of the Mahajans. He's one of the twelve Mahajans, right? So he said, let me take Kayadu with me. I will keep her protected. Huh? I will keep her with me. And once the child comes, I will. Uh, if uh, you know, I'll give all the knowledge and everything. So he took Kayadu with him, and for all the time that Hiranyakashipu was doing tapasya, Kayadu kept the child inside her womb. And uh, this was a benediction given by Narad Muni that you will not deliver before Hiranyakashipu comes back. And he gave her knowledge. So he is giving knowledge to Kayadu, but Kayadu really did not listen. But who was listening? Prahlad Maharaj, right? It happens, right? We are giving a class. Not everybody listens. Some people are, uh, you know, listening, but not in their own world still, like not really hanging on to every word. But Narad Muni uh, was talking to Prahlad Maharaj actually, and Prahlad Maharaj was listening, hanging on to every word of Narad Muni, and he got all the knowledge. He got the knowledge of the absolute truth. He got all the principles uh, of the Vedas. He got all the principles of the Bhakti Yoga, of the Supreme Bhagavad Dharma, of the Pancham Purusharth, Bhakti Yoga, right? He got all this knowledge. And so he came out, he came out as a Paramhansa. He did not just uh, come out as a normal child. He came out already as a Paramhansa devotee of the Lord, okay? And on the other hand here, this, this is Hiranya Kashipu asking benedictions from Brahmaji. Uh, his body has been restored by him. And these are the things he says. This is from Bhagavatam. Um, can people take turns to read these uh, loudly? Text 35. Oh, my Lord, O oh best of the givers of benediction, if you will kindly grant me the benediction I desire, please let me not meet death from any of the living entities created by you. So he said, please let me not meet death from any of the living entities created by you. This is the fault. Uh, this is the fault of his plan. He said, Aapne jisko banaya, wo mujhe nahi mar sakta. Because he thought Brahma ji is the supreme authority. But he did not think jisne Brahma ji ko banaya hai, that person can kill you. Okay. Right. Brahma ji ne jisko banaya, that cannot kill you. But jisne Brahma ji ko banaya, that can kill you. Right. This is right here is the first fallacy in his uh, plan. Okay. Uh, next. Text 36. 
Grant me that I will not die within any residence or outside any residence during the daytime or at night, nor on the ground, nor in the sky. Grant me that my death not be brought by any being other than those created by you, nor by any weapon, nor by any human being or animal. Okay, one more. That's 37 and 38. Grant me that I am not made death from any entity living or non-living. Grant me further that I will not be killed by any demigod or demon, by any great snake from the world. Since no one can kill you in the battlefield, you have no comp competitor. Therefore, grant me the benediction that I, have to, that I too have, may have no rival. Give me soul lordship over all living entities from presiding, presiding deities and give me glories obtained by that position. Furthermore, give me all the mystic powers obtained by long austerities and practice of yoga. For these cannot be lost at any time. Very bold. So he asked for all these benedictions. So look at his intelligence. He's asking for all kinds of things that he thought can kill him. He asked for protection against all those things, right? Uh, any snake, any demigod, any demon, any living or non-living entity, any uh, presiding deity, any um, give me all these mystic powers, uh, all this. And then may I not be killed within or outside or daytime or nighttime ground or sky um, and all, all of these benedictions he asked for, right? So then um, now we talk about, so then he came back. Hiranyakashipu got all these benedictions, started ruling his kingdom and he created havoc. He created havoc in the uh, creation. He changed all the rules of the material world. Then uh, mein um, bolta tha ki I want to see, you know, uh, winter mein bolta tha ki I want these fruits that come only in summer. I still want these fruits. I still want this plantation or vegetation in winter or summers mein I want this to dry up. I want that to, be, uh, the sun to be here, the moon to be there. He changed all kind of rules of the material world. Hmm? So he was creating a lot of ha havoc and uh, disturbing the demigods and disturbing the ordinary living entities, right? And meanwhile, Prahlad Maharaj is born and Hiranya Kashipu loves him deeply. This is his only child, right? Or bhi bachche the, again, this was, I think at that time, only child. He really loved him. He sent him to his uh, best um, school there, which was run by the um, uh, children of uh, Shukracharya. So Shukracharya had two kids, hmm? Shanda and Amarka. Shanda and Amarka used to run the school and they started teaching Prahlad Maharaj. So Prahlad Maharaj was going to this school. Okay. Now Prahlad Maharaj, a Paramhansa devotee, is born and he's going to the school where uh, demonic teacher Shanda and Amarka are teaching. Okay. Everybody's following this so far? Yes. Thumbs up. Shall we keep going? Okay. Okay. So then one day Hiranyakashipu took Prahlad on his lap. And he asked, oh, my dear son, what have you learned in the school? What have you learned? What have you learned? Not the school. What have you learned? What is the best thing that you have learned? Okay. What is the best thing you have learned? And this is what Prahlad Maharaj said. First thing he spoke to Hiranya Kashipu. Okay. And this is what he said. This is very, very celebrated shloka. This is a very, very beautiful shloka. He says, Shri Prahlad Vacha Tat Sadhu Manne Dehinam Sada samud veg nabiyama sagrihar. It was a patam grihamanda kupam. Vernam gato yad harima shreta. Very, very beautiful verse. This verse is very, very popular because this is the first thing. This is a pali ball pe chakka. Kya? What did he tell you, Raneka Shipu? Oh, best of the asura. Sur varya. King of the demons, as far as I've learned from my spiritual master, so he's not even talking about Shanda Marka's teachings. He's talking about Narad Muni's teachings that he received in the womb of his mother. Any person who has accepted a temporary body and temporary household life is certainly embarrassed by anxiety. This is the same thing that we're talking about, right? Anxiety and fearful situation in this material world. 
because of having fallen in a dark well and the griham and the kupam because we have fallen into this dark well where there is no water but only suffering one should give up this position and go to the forest one more clearly go to vrindavan where only krishna consciousness is prevalent and take shelter of supreme personality of godhead vanam gato yad harim ashreta man chale jao aur hari ka ashray lo he is saying this to hiranyakashipu basically that you my father the best of the demons you have fallen into this andha kuwa right and this world is full of miseries you have accepted this body and there is no coming out of it unless leave all of this leave this kingdom leave this household this is degrading you and go out to the forest go to one ha huh? one press le lo go to one and um take shelter of hari when hiranyakashipu heard this he told chanda and amarka what are you teaching my child you know he is talking about taking shelter of hari taking shelter of vishnu vishnu is my greatest enemy and he is telling me to take shelter of vishnu and there's some vaishnavas that have gotten inside your your gurukul he actually says that in bhagavatam it is said hirane uh, kashipu bolta hai ki tumhare gurukul mein koi vaishnavas aa gaye hain maybe scorn devotees have come or hare krishna devotees have come ha huh? he says vaishnavas aa gaye that are uh, brainwashed my child go teach him proper things what are you teaching him so chanda and amarka said oh uh, oh my lord please give us another chance we will fix him so they took him back to gurukul and they uh, actually isme bataya gaya bhagavatam mein unhone stick banayi ek of the thorns and they beat him with it they chastised him or scared him i think they chastised or scared him and uh, they told him you know who, where are you learning all this from you need to learn the things that we teach you we teach you about an economic development we teach you about politics we teach you about uh, how to defeat demigods and uh, how to rule over other living entities what are you learning this is all the things that he says um i think i'll keep moving because we don't have time but he basically says um that they basically say that learn all these other things from us not um not this fashion of stuff so after teaching all this then prahlad maharaj then they thought okay prahlad maharaj can be presented again to hiranyakashipu so they personally washed the boy dressed him with ornaments and they presented him before the father again okay second time present kare before the father and now narad muni now remember narad muni is telling the story to yudhishthir maharaj right so hiranyakashipu very beautiful very very still loves his child he thought this was fault of shanda and amarka he loves his child he seated on his lap he smelled his head affectionate tears gliding from his eyes imagine how much he loved him moistening the child's face he loved him so much and he spoke okay my dear son o oh, long lived one ha huh? ki aapki umar lambi ho for uh, so much time you have heard many things from your teacher now please tell me what is the best of that knowledge phir se same question pucha kya bataya aapne aapne kya sikha second time pucha and still pure vatsalya bhav mein right with full fatherly love and affection and this time prahlad maharaj said this another very very famous verse that we have often often recited almost every time in our bhagavatam in our bhagavad gita class right shri prahlad vacha what did he say shravanam kirtanam vishnu smaranam pad sevanam archanam vandanam dasyam sakyam atmanivedanam the next verse is iti pumsar pita vishnu bhakte chinnav lakshana ियर Uh, important very very um uh celebrated words that we can try to learn he says mate na krishne parta svato va mitho vipadde griha gritanam adant gobe vishtam tamishram puna punashchar vitachar vananam he says puna punashchar vitachar vananam that If that people that are engaged in these materialistic life are just chewing the chewed 
जैसे उसका स्वाद भी निकल गया है ओवर ओवर एंड ओवर एवरी लाइफ टाइम डूइंग द सेम थिंग एवरी डे डूइंग द सेम थिंग सेम टीवी सेम ईटिंग द फूड यू नो सेम सेंस ग्रेटिफिकेशन चुइंग द चूड जैसे चुंगम चबाते रहते हैं उसका स्वाद आता है शुरू शुरू में फिर निकल जाता है इवन देन कीप चुइंग दैट चुइंग हैज नो वैल्यू इट इज श्रम एव ही केवलम इट इज हार्ड वर्क लेबर विदाउट गिविंग एनी बेनिफिट और एनी हेल्प एनी प्लेजर एट ऑल so that is what people are doing they are chewing that which has already been chewed and for such people matir na krishna parata swatova they their inclination towards krishna can never be aroused by themselves or by instruction from others koi kitna bhi bol le krishna ke liye rati nahi utpann hogi matir na krishna in this way he kept giving more and more um, knowledge very 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 important verses in this uh, canto he says more things about this and when hiranyakashipu heard this he pushed pehle to itne pyar se bitaya tha now he pushed pralad from his lap threw him on the floor hmm uh, pralad actually went flying uh, far away on the floor and he said he take this a uh, child he has become my enemy this this um, child is not my child anymore he has become vishnu's agent he has become a devotee of vishnu and he is no use to me anymore right that is the demonic people jab tak fayda hai tab tak aapko dekhenge karenge aapko pyar karenge exchange karenge jab when there is no fayda they will just throw you out so he said this cannot this person cannot inherit my kingdom this is like a diseased limb and he says this in the shloka this is like a diseased limb and we should amputate that limb um, when when a limb gets diseased we should amputate it cut it off similarly cut this child off ha huh? he basically threw them into the he threw him into the pit of snakes uh, try to have him trampled by the elephants try to throw him from the mountain try to um feed him poison uh, holika sat with him in the fire but nothing happened to pralad so that part i think all of you know um how nothing happened to pralad now shanda and amarka the teacher said okay some thing is you know he is very powerful because of power from vishnu probably let us give give us another chance to teach him again in gurukul okay second time we are asking for a chance this time we will not disappoint you my king my lord hmm? give me another chance so this time also he um took them took him back what do you think happened this time let me hear from some people let me see and who can answer so chanda and amarka took pralad maharaj back to their gurukul yes vinita can you say that loudly i can't barely hear you uh when he went back the second time did he start teaching them about krishna consciousness yes this time he started preaching ab itna itna hua unke upar torment he was try, they tried to kill him with all possible means but this time he started teaching preaching krishna consciousness in his school in his gurukul to all the other kids see how he's doing kirtan they started chanting the names of the lord and one day when chanda every time chanda and amarka would leave the class he'll teach them and kids will ask him how did you learn all this knowledge hum to same baatein sunte hain apne teacher se they never teach us this how did you learn and then pralad maharaj told them the story uh, as well how my mother was uh, protected by narad muni and my spiritual master who gave her all the knowledge and i inside the womb heard all this knowledge and then he also told them that we should practice this dharma from uh, very childhood okay kamar acharit pragyo dharman bhagavatani yeah this bhagavat dharma should be practiced from childhood why because there is not enough time in our life durlabham manusham janma tadapi adrupam arthadam and uh, he gave them many many nice teachings that my dear friends born in demonic families the happiness that we perceive with our senses um is uh, according to one's past fruitive activity such happiness can be obtained without endeavor right वो तो हमारे कर्मा से मिली हैप्पीनेस वी डोंट हैव टू ट्राई टू हार्ड फॉर द हैप्पीनेस यू आर ऑलवेज ट्राइंग टू हार्ड बट यू आर गेटिंग दैट हैप्पीनेस नॉट बिकॉज ऑफ व्हाट यू आर डूइंग बट बिकॉज ऑफ व्हाट यू हैव डन इन द पास्ट सो राइट नाउ व्हाट यू नीड टू डू इज टू गेट आउट ऑफ दिस साइकिल सो प्रैक्टिस दिस धर्म एंड ही गिव्स अ वेरी नाइस ब्रेक डाउन ऑफ आवर लाइफ कि हाउ इन आवर लाइफ लेट्स से यू लिव 70 इयर्स हाउ मच टाइम इज गॉन इन स्लीपिंग हाउ मच टाइम इज गॉन इन ईटिंग सो ही गिव्स अ वेरी नाइस ब्रेक डाउन ही सेज Every human being has a life of 100 years. 
he took at that time are low 100 years old but for one who cannot control his senses half of those years are lost because at night he sleeps 12 hours being covered by ignorance therefore such a person has lifetime of only 50 years and then he keeps giving the breakdown that 50 years uh, you have slept 12 hours you have slept uh, and then on 50 years may say this much time you spent eating this much time you spent sense gratification this much time you spent working fruitive activities so actually the time left for remembering the lord or any spiritual activities is very less in this way he gives the um, breakdown now uh, they, the Shanda and Amarka bring back Prahlad Maharaj back to Hiranyakashipu. This, this time they are complaining. They say we cannot take care of this child. This child is spoiling all other children also. Baki ke log bhi devotees ban gaya. Baki ke log bhi hari kirtan kar rahe hai. We cannot have that in our Gurukul. Huh? Uh, Hiranyakashipu goes, wapis hai, aapko jo karna hai karo. Last time they protected him, we'll try to teach him. This time they said, you take him back, he's spoiling the whole school. So this time Hiranyakashipu said, O oh, most in, impudent, unintelligent destructor of the family, lowest of mankind, you have violated my power to rule you. Therefore, you are an obstinate fool. Today, I shall send you to the place of Yamraj. So, Prahlad, and then he says, this is a few verses later, he says, where does your strength come from? Aapki strength kahan se hai? So, Prahlad, actually, there is one more. Yeah. You rascal, you know that when I am angry, all the planets tremble. By whose power... You have become so impudent that you appear fearless and overstep my power to rule you. Ki aapki strength kahan se aati hai? So then Prahlad Maharaj says that the strength, source of my strength is the same as you. He is the source of your strength and mine. Right? This is the supreme personality of Godhead who is controlling both you and me. Kahan se aare apni strength? And then he says, Achha, you keep glorifying this uh, supreme personality of Godhead. Will he come to protect you today when I try to kill you? And is he present here today? Yes, he's present here. And then he walked up to this column and hit the column. Is he present here? And as soon as he hit it with a fist, the column uh, crack again. And there came a loud roar, roar from the column, which we have talked about before. The roar was how ferocious the roar was. And then he, and then uh, Narsing Bhagwan came out of the column. And when he came, he was so wonderful. Imagine so huge. So huge, with big teeth, very, very ferocious, ready to pounce. This is the same roof as Ugra Narsimha, with knees bent, eyes looking everywhere. Where is Ranya Kashipu? Knees bent, ready to pounce. Eyes looking for him. Anger blazing from his red eyes. Huh? And this was the roof in which he came out. So, Narsimha Deva Bhagavan Ki Jai. So then there was a lot of fight between the two. He, they actually fought for almost six hours or more. Yuki Narsingh Dev came uh, about noon, huh? um, at noon, and then the plan was to kill Hiranyakashipu at dusk, right? Neither morning nor night, at dusk. So the dusk time, so 12 o'clock se leke 6 o'clock tak dusk pe, when he killed Hiranyakashipu, um, there was almost 6 hours. So he played with Hiranyakashipu like a um, cat plays with the mouse. Kabhi pakar liya, kabhi chhod diya, jane diya. Uh, and all the demigods were watching and they were wondering, oh, will he, his, this fight is going on too long. Will he be able to kill Hiranyakashipu uh, Hiranya or not? Even they started doubting. He looks so ferocious, but he's just playing with him. He's not killing him. And then finally, he fulfilled their desire and killed them. And then um, once he killed them, Prahlad Maharaj offered many, many prayers to um, Narsingh Bhagwan, which... Uh, uh, come in chapter 8 and chapter 9, uh, chapter 9 actually, chapter 9, where a lot of prayers of uh, Prahlad Maharaj come, you can please feel free to read in your own time. Uh, if you want, I can show you the chapter so you feel inspired. Um, but, uh, let's see yeah, this. So this is the chapter 7.8, uh, Lord Narsimha slays the king of the demons. Very, very nice chapter. Not many verses. You can easily, like 56 verses, easily read. Uh, just the translations at least. And then how Prahlad pacifies. Because Narsingh Dev was so angry even after Lord Narsimha had killed Hiranyakashipu. He was sitting there but so angry. Nobody was able to approach him. And so what prayers did he offer to pacify? Very, very beautiful prayers. Things that we um, don't, cannot even imagine. We should really read. 
and how and even narsingh dev chastised brahma ji he called brahma ji and chastised him do not give such benedictions again ha ha cuz i have to fix these things right because he came uh, in this form mainly because of the benediction given by brahma ji and he came out of the pillar because of the word of pralad that yes he is there so he came out of the column and he came in that roof because of brahma ji's benediction but there is a verse where he says he chastises brahma ji do not give these benedictions again um but um, yes this is the whole past time and there are so many more details which i have missed out just for the time constraints but please everybody add share ask questions yes rana why did those pictures of narsimha only have four arms yes so i think this is just uh, artistic liberty cuz it's hard maybe hard to draw the 16 arms but i've seen the, him drawn as four typically narsing dev has four arms like in other rupas when he comes like when mahaprabhu took the narsing rupa or when there are exchanges with dt's described four arms are described like vishnu but when he came out of the column the shodash bahu roop 16 arm roop is described um but uh, it may be just um, artistic challenges i guess but there are paintings with the 16 arms also mm -hmm. i've seen 10 arm group also so. anything else so yes please read uh, chapter 8 and 9 if possible it is very interesting because it's it's a conversation right the whole bhagavatam is nothing but conversation between different devotees so yudhishthir maharaj is asking narad muni narad muni is replying in between they'll keep asking just like you asked yudhishthir maharaj keeps asking questions from narad muni hold on ji someone may i can you tell this again yeah, like that okay anybody else wants to share anything um prinka mata ji hema vedahi vinita murli prabhu ravi prabhu any questions anything you want to share Okay, so if there are no questions, we will stop for today. Narsingh Dev Bhagwan ki jai, jai Pralad Maharaj ki jai, Dev Bhakti Ganu ki jai, Jagat Guru ki Lakshmi Pad ki jai, Hare Krishna.